Okay, now we have the situation that we have a very precise proxy. So the correlation between the proxy and our unobserved confounders is almost one, but we also have very, very little exogenous variation in X1. So the standard deviation of the exogenous variation is almost zero in X1. Um, now, when we get a biased estimate or not a biased estimate, let's run it and we run it once. Here we uh, seem still to have a positive bias, but also if we have so little variation, our estimator may not be so um, precise. I run it several times, but every time here we get a, we estimate a much larger coefficient for beta 1 than the true causal effect. So this means even if we have a very good proxy for the confounder, we still need sufficient sources of exogenous variation in X1 to precisely estimate uh, our causal effect of interest without bias. So if we add more uh, source of exogenous variation, and here now we have relatively much compared to the noise in the proxy, then we actually estimate quite precise the causal effect and there's really not easy to see any bias in these estimations. But we need sufficiently many sources of exogenous variation. And in particular, if the proxy is more imprecise, then we need more basically exogenous variation in X1 to estimate it. So here we have a very imprecise proxy now. I kept the standard deviation of the exogenous variation to 0.1. And again, we have a lot of bias. But if we have a lot of exogenous variation in X1, keeping the noise of the proxy the same, the bias vanishes again. So it's always kind of a relationship to how precisely can we control for the confounders with our proxies and how much exogenous variation do we have in the X1 that in the end determines the bias of our OLS estimator.